and um, we we rain checked it once, and here we are. Um, and it's just so great to be with you guys. I mean, we're small, but that's totally fine yeah, uh, to be great. small. We have hundreds of thousands of people watching this. Live. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> greetings, all of you. Um, so yeah, we'll just start off with a conversation with our three artists here, and then we can have a conversation with each other, which I think everybody would enjoy. So <clears throat> why don't we just do this? Uh, okay, we'll start with you. Mina. Okay. We'll just go down. So just give us like the one minute bio, born, raised, family, you know, just kind of a simple yes. uh, life little bio, and then we'll get to the art part specifically. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Mina Matoka. I was born and raised in Austin, right here in Austin. I went to Texas Women's University for two years, transferred to UT. I majored in art. Uh, before that, I was a pre-med major. Um, and so that's an interesting story for another time. Um, and uh, I was a missionary. My husband and I were missionaries for uh, about eight years in uh, Northwest China. And we have a nine-year-old son. And um, I'm the daughter of Indian immigrants and um, have, yeah, all kinds of stories to tell about that too. So <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So my name is Steven. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I'm from South Texas originally from a big family of seven, uh, homeschool family. Um, I, yeah, let's see. I, um, I went to A&M and, uh, studied computer science and architecture wanting to, uh, wanting to do computer, you know, computer graphics and uh, ended up dropping out um, and saying, I'll, you know, I'll teach myself. Well, by that time I became interested in filmmaking and uh, uh, so I just teach myself. And um, around this period of time, I had a business buying and selling rare books online. And uh, wow. I did that for like seven Obviously. years. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, as well as like, you know, I was like, I'm gonna teach myself I was like, I'm not going to go out and buy a camera because in high school, I went out and bought a camera <laughs> and uh, I didn't know how to use it. And I didn't know anything about storytelling and image making. And um, I was like, you know what? I'll try to like just learn about uh, visual. Well, I think this maybe I'm getting ahead of things. But anyway, um, now I live in Austin and I do video production for my work. I have three kids and, and my wonderful wife, Whitney. And we've... Um, yeah, three kids under four, and three, <laughs> three kids under four. Yeah. That is a story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Phaedra, and I grew up in Scotland. Um, my dad worked for an oil company, and um, then we moved to Texas when I was 13, and so kind of mostly been here ever since. I also was at Texas Women's University for two years. And also was pre med before I switched to art. <laughs> really <laughs> hard that we, we both have that. But um, ended up going switching to UNT, um, University of North Texas, and got my degree in sculpture there. Um, and never really was artistic, like an artist as a kid. So kind of that discovery came in school for me. And I didn't have a lot of like, you know, natural like drawing talent. I wasn't like the kid that drew all the time or anything. So I learned, I learned a lot of that in school. So I really appreciate art teachers, people that can, mm -hmm. I, I also enjoy teaching for that reason. Um, what else do we yeah. Oh, I have two children. Mm -hmm. I'm married to David. <laughs> yeah. We live in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so I'm David and I was born and raised as some of you know in Guatemala. And um, then we moved around the States a bit and then landed at the University of Texas and then went to seminary in Vancouver, British Columbia, where Shannon and her husband, Peter, are uh, from-ish. <laughs> and, um, and then was a pastor here in Austin for about 10 years at a church where I met Jeff Guerrero and, um, and then went off to do my PhD at Duke and now teach theology at Fuller Seminary. I do theology and arts and other kind of fun things like that. So um, that's my story. Um, so it's great to have you guys. Thank you. We love artists. 
And uh, I sent them all a list of questions and we'll, we'll start with a few to kind of get us going. And I'm sure we'll, you know, explore other kind of territory. But <clears throat> let, me, let me ask a question. I actually teach a course on the vocation of artists. And so I've had chances over the years to hear how it is that all kinds of artists answer this question. But I think one of the interesting ones is like at what point in your life did you sort of internally shift from I like art to feeling like I think this is what I'm made to do, which is different from like, I feel like I can say the phrase I am an artist out loud to other people and not feel awkward or embarrassed, which sometimes is an issue, but sort of like a sense of internally like, you know, what? I think I, I like I'm called to, to do something with this, whether I make bread and butter with it is a separate issue, but a sense of like, clearly this is part of why I'm on planet earth. And whether it's clear what you're doing or not, sort of that sense of like, at what point did it like click for you guys? And then, you know, what around kind of that experience, were you making art? Was it on the cusp of beginning to make a lot of art? So I'll start with you, Mina. Well. Okay, yeah, I mean, um, I grew up with art and art around me. My dad was a professional engineer, like he worked as an engineer for the state of Texas, but he was an artist mm. as well. And so, you know, like my earliest, some of my earliest memories are making art with him. Mm. Um, he loved watercolors, he drew. And so, yeah, like as early as when I was learning to write, uh, you know, letters and numbers, <laughs> I was drawing. And so oh, wow. it was just kind of a part of mm. growing up. Whenever I had free time, that's what I did. I drew, I wrote stories um, and, so, you know, it was always there, but I, growing up in an Indian American family, it's, it's not considered something that you, you know, it's not on the list of, mm, you know, approved, rec, yeah, approved um, careers. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, hence the pre-med sort of direction. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's like doctor, engineer, um, maybe lawyer, you know, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. So um, artist just was never, you know, okay. Um, and so, I mean, it was a, it was a process. Um, I did have an art teacher um, in first grade who really affirmed that he himself was an artist, like a professional working artist. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that first, you know, that first grade art class, he sat, the you know the students down and you know I was really I was always out of place you know I was the only Indian girl at school um, mm. and you know just the skinny awkward you know kind of out of place girl and um, he asked if it'd be okay if he drew me mm. and so uh, mm. he did this like beautiful sketch of me it, you know I still have it like yeah. it's uh, this beautiful yeah. pencil sketch um and you know i of course couldn't process it at the time but looking back that was the first time i really felt seen mm. you know and <laughs> appreciated um there was no changing my nose or you know the texture of my hair you know it was me you know and i just remember you know like i want that you know i want to give people that mm. and um so that kind of started the journey of uh you know mainly my subjects are figures and people and so mm -hmm. that kind of started that journey and um you know from there it was a process of me really just getting to know god and getting to know who i was mm -hmm. um as a child of god and as a follower of jesus mm -hmm. and kind of growing in that confidence that oh you know i might be the only artist in the room here but that that's just me, you know, and is that still like childhood or teenage years? That's teenage years and college, oh, okay. um, even beyond college, um, you know, just really struggling with how, you know, being wired this way fit into mm. following Jesus, mm. you know, um, I just didn't know that many mm. creatives or artists, mm. um, you know, even in the spiritual context in our church kind of growing up. And so, it was hard for me to see how that would fit. Mm. Um, you know, how, how do you sort of glorify the word and be an artist, you know? And so uh, it took me some time, but I would say that uh, I, we went through a period of infertility 
Um, our son was a surprise to mm -hmm. us um, and this wonderful gift. And then the birthing, uh, birthing him was such a healing mm -hmm. thing for me um, that that really turned things around. You know, mm -hmm. it was just, you know, doing the labor and delivery of my son. I just felt the Lord's presence in that pain. So like, so um, <laughs> here's the baby here. Um, yeah, um, I just felt the Lord's presence in such a powerful way. And um, it just really kind of turned it around. And I guess I was just able to see like, you are okay the way that you are wired. And it is okay to be an artist and follow Jesus. And um, so I started making art um, again after he was born, which is kind of a, I don't know, it's hard to make art when you have a little infant, but you know, <laughs> it's just like little pockets here and there of, you know, like an hour during nap time or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and now it's kind of, he's nine years old now. And um, now it's a full-time thing. So, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. So that's, great. Process. that's good. Um, Steve, do you mind if I, if we go to Fader first, sure. because if, if we're writing a music score, I think we have a little bit of a, a overlap of a okay. sort of a, yeah, Trinity. harmony happening. Yeah. between these two stories yeah. and then you can kind of bring in you know the base right. yeah, the <laughs> uh, so okay I think mine is was a more gradual process uh, I don't I don't know that I had like a time where I was like oh this is like I'm I'm I should do this and then I moved forward you know significantly or anything I think it was grad I, well when I first discovered art, I was pretty burned out from my pre-med sort of um, goal and, and had been just doing school in a way that was kind of intense and a lot of, because of, I, I felt some pressure from my, my family, you know, and just things that were good intentions, you know, my parents really wanted me to have a career that would be stable and financially, you know, um, so what I'm looking for? Lucrative, Bi viable, viable. <laughs> you know, like I could support myself viable, and lucrative. I would always be able to have a job and they saw that there was, I had mm. some, you know, inclination towards the sciences and anyway, so I, I sort of had a, an experience in my anatomy and physiology class where I was drawing a lot mm. of wow. diagrams as part of just what you do mm. you know you, there's a lot of drawing actually and I was um or at least it, it, illustrating or like you know filling mm. out these anyway I was getting like lost in the in making <laughs> these diagrams yeah. um and yeah. charts and stuff and I was failing the class like <laughs> like absolutely you know every test or whatever but I would just like spend so much time make coloring and making these <laughs> these diagrams and was like I'm not doing this you know and so I I at that point it was like I, sh I want to take a drawing class like what would that be what would it be like to take a drawing mm. class I've never really done anything with art and um mm. so that was sort of one first thing, turn and then <clears throat> I did leave and I went to community, community college for a year and did mostly all drawing and design classes there and I think the second sort of like switch for me was realizing I can learn how to do this. Like just because I'm not naturally like can draw anything sort of person or, or can build anything or whatever, like I can learn, that's a skill that I can learn. So I think real, I had some teachers that were really encouraging in that way. Um, and then just little things along the way, mostly from professors who would, speak into like into my life like they noticed there was something in me that they wanted to encourage you know and I remember one time this was a later drawing class but the professor was, it was like an end of the year critique you know final critique of all the work and he started out by saying so obviously you've been drawing for a really long time <laughs> and it was like now I've been drawing for a year and a half like I've never drawn ever, you know? And so little things like that, that just made me realize like, okay, maybe there's something here I should pursue, like a, like a natural inclination um, or, or ta talent of some kind, you know? Um, not that I think that art, I mean, I, I don't think you have to have that to be an artist necessarily, but I think it helps. Um, 
and and anyway so just things like that and then and then I became a Christian in college um and my experience of that is somewhat unique also in that I I really was brought into the family of God by a bunch of artists <laughs> so the people that I was with that sort of shepherd and shepherded me in were all musicians or visual artists which I think is really unusual and that was at the University of North Texas um and so there was a lot of just like they were wired like me so that was like a really wonderful way to kind of you know come in and and then um and then other voices of people that were you know discipling me or encouraging me in that time just say as i was going through all the questions that someone that's new you know to life with god does like should i give this up and go into ministry should i go into mission should i change my life drastically you know should i should i do something else completely and there were just a lot of people that were that said to me in that time you should you're an artist you should be an artist and and i yeah. i know that that's that is unusual yeah. um, and so i do think of that a lot yeah. um like that feels like a gift you yeah. know that i still kind of pull yeah. on and then i would say um my time when i was at hope chapel david um i i went there to do an art residency and there was a lot of growth in that time as well and just the affirmation that like there is a place for art in the church and it's in fact really important and it it helps people and it ministers to people and it's a way that god communicates and it's it's part of making the kingdom of god come alive and 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 i should keep doing it mm -hmm. but i will just say like i i still continue to struggle with like <laughs> should i do it because it's really hard um and there are a lot of things i could think of that seem like they would be easier and so you know i have a i have continue i have repeated um experiences of like i think i should give this up and then like <laughs> there's a real clear like oh no i shouldn't i shouldn't because of something mm. someone says or an interaction i have or an email i receive or yeah. something you know that is like oh no mm. this is I should keep doing this. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Stephen, how about yourself? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I guess it was. It was probably. Well, yeah. And and sometime in high school, um, high school and, and junior high that I just became interested in lots of different art art um, art forms. Uh, drawing, you know, drawing was uh, was definitely one of the first one of the early ones for me um, and a big influence. Um, and uh, we also, I, I, you know, was homeschooled. Uh, my mom was a, my mom was an artist uh, or yeah, she, she drew um, and um, I had a lot of musical sisters, five, <laughs> uh, but uh, um, yeah. And, and I was, I was really interested, you know, I was interested in, um, computers and, and, yeah. and, and art and art and technology and, you know, make, you know, I wanted to make video games and uh, I, I um, um, and, uh, and, you know, video get game design, like, like filmmaking is like, you know, it's, it's, a, you know, a lot of, a lot of different arts put together and um, yeah. And then I, you know, being homeschooled, I, I never had an art, art class. Um, so it's kind of, well, yeah. So I, I also learned, you know, teach myself and then we had an artist who lived down the street from us um who was this amazing renaissance man artist uh who grew up with my dad um and he lived on our street and we, we and he he was an amazing painter and sculptor and he was self-taught and he would teach himself all these new arts and he'd, he'd make, create a grass glass blowing studio when i was in high school on his you know he researched it and built it and he would repair violins and um yeah amazing guy um steve russell is his name uh, yeah and um and so i also grew up grew up going down to see him and uh and he he i started sketching and he um i would talk to him about art and and he got me a um he bought me a, 
a, a, a tablet, a, a Wacom tablet. This is in the 90s, uh, which is a digital painting device. Um, and um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I feel like sometime that was kind of a, maybe that was a moment of, of kind of validation or um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I also struggled with the whole, you know, art versus something practical thing, um, you know, and I, I, I was interested in film in high school too, and uh, sort of a, yeah, I didn't know exactly what to do next. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was, I, I also started you know, doing photography um, then. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, yeah. That. Yeah, so like, so your teenage years, you mm -hmm. feel like was, you had enough sort of voices or people saying, this is the way we'll connect. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. I see, it, it is fascinating how in, influential the, your kid years and teenage years mm -hmm. are for, you know, one's sense, of, I mean, it's true of everything, right? But also for, for art making. Um, Okay, so shifting into the work that you guys make, I think one of the really fun things to, to hear artists talk about is you can tell us what medium you work in primarily because I'm sure you guys work in multiple, I work in multiple media. Um, but what is, let's just keep it simple. What is one thing that you love um, or you find deeply satisfying about um, the art making itself or yeah, the experience of making art? And what is one thing that you find particularly challenging or hard or frustrating? Um, uh, kind of a little sneak peek into the laboratory of an artist's life. Mm. Um, so, mm -hmm. all right, uh, Stephen, we'll start with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so so one thing <clears throat> that you love. Yeah. Um, do yeah. Like, yeah. Do, do we also, do you want us to tell us what we primarily yes. yeah, do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Like sure, describe sure. that yeah. more, mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah. know, Yes. I think that might be yeah. like first. So you can choose what okay. you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I know, you know, and I mean, I, I, um, I do, I do photography and, and also documentary filmmaking. Um, but um, yeah, I don't, what, what, I mean, the thing about all the art I've been, mediums I've been involved in is, um, is the thing I love is um, how, how making art, um, how it lets you see, see what, you know, what's there already. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my experience when I, in drawing, uh, you know, observational drawing, suddenly you see the world um, mm -hmm. and you, yeah. you know, and it's like, um, yeah. And you, you know, you realize you hadn't seen it before. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's sort of like God's glory is there. If you look, you know, is in everything if you if you if you look for it and mm -hmm. uh, or if you have eyes yeah it, it really look right um yeah, yeah. so that i yeah. have it i've seen have it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's his website yeah uh, um this is a good thing so yeah and that's that that came originally from drawing and, and but yeah and photography and and also film, filmmaking um yeah so that's that's the joy that's, I mean, that's definitely one of the joys for me um is um yeah and then challenge let's see challenge Challenges that yeah, hard, um, frustrating, yeah, irritating, whatever. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's see. I mean, I would say right now, yeah, it's kind of a. I've been in kind of a season of just busyness and and not, yeah, not, not, not making as much as I'd like to, and um, and also. Um, on the film, well, yeah, on the filmmaking side of things, um, yeah, it's uh, the challenge. Well, I, maybe it's just my personality. I'm a start. I'm a natural starter of things, and I, I've always liked, um, res you know, uh, responding, responding to things. Um, I mean, like say, for example, like like sketching, uh, you know, sketching and observing, and um, I, but finishing things is hard. <laughs> <laughs> or, or made like making a documentary. So I, I, uh, me and me and three friends went and filmed this artist Steve Russell uh, three year, three years ago, um, and we filmed him over a weekend. And I had also filmed him 
prior to that, but uh, we interviewed him for like 10 hours uh, and filmed the studio. And um, yeah, so I've been, I've been sort of, that's been like, I was like, I want to make, make, make a short documentary project out of this. And, and I haven't, and I, you know, it, it's really hard to find the time and, or also for me, it's, it's partly um, um, having sort of the, uh, having a having a plan for um, for finishing yeah, things sure, sure, sure. yeah so i just got to maybe those two things right now uh and also also the balance between art and and practical things like my other vocations being a father being a husband being a provider um that's definitely yeah can be a struggle too sure, yeah, for sure. yeah all right Peter. yeah i mean i actually relate to a lot of what you said Stephen. like it's um I would say the my favorite thing is to observe mm. and um, like I I also um, and I'm an educator um, and I like I teach like the youngest kids from the very beginning you know to you know to be a good artist you need to learn how to see things <laughs> and um, you need to learn how to pay attention mm. um, and it's not about making a good drawing that looks like what you know and it's represented. It's really about paying attention and then helping other people to pay attention to what you found, you know. And so that's my favorite part. And so I, I also keep mm -hmm. sketchbooks. And mm. I also feel like too, like being an artist isn't just like, I don't know, it's not the things that come out um it's paying attention to the things that are around you and kind of collecting them and mm. and then that's what mm. forms the artwork um mm. and so yeah i i mean that's that's probably my favorite part and so you know instead of separating out like being an artist from all the other parts of my life it's part of it you know mm -hmm. it's I'm paying attention mm. when I'm parent, you know, when I'm being mm. a mother to Joshua, I'm paying attention when I'm doing the dishes, I'm paying attention <laughs> when, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, in all these other aspects of life. And so mm. um, it's not compartmentalized into these separate things. Um, mm. And so when you're in a season of life where, especially this last year and a half, you know, when it's just like so much of it, you're in survival mode. Mm. And it's hard to find the capacity, like the emotional capacity to make artwork mm. when you're just trying to make sure everybody mm. around you is taken care of, you know, mm -hmm. and you're taken care of. Um, and so I've, I've kind of come up with the like cocoon phase to the butterfly phase and sort mm. of like embracing mm. the cocoon phase because that's where all the stuff, you're collecting all the stuff. Mm. And then for as long as that takes, it's okay. You know, it's okay if, you know, cause I think what, you know, with social media and stuff too, and even before that, like it's production, produ produce, you're a producer, you know? And, um, mm -hmm. and there's a pressure to put that content out there so that you'll be seen and recognized, you know? There's a lot of pressure for that. And- I hear rumors of that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it, like keeping these journals, like it's the mashup of a sketchbook and just a traditional journal that I keep, but mm. anybody can do it. Like not just visual artists. Mm. Like I feel like anybody can do this and any, you know, vocation that they've chosen to, to do. And it helps, it really has helped me process. It helps me to remember that my value doesn't come out of what I produce. Mm. It comes out of who I am as, you know, God's child. Mm. And um, so that's, that's my favorite, but it's also the most difficult. So <laughs> those are both there. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and I forgot. So I I am trained as a painter, an oil painter. Um, I do portraits. I do um, figures, the body, and then um, I have since grown into doing mixed media with ashes and charcoal, and I use soil and wax and sort of create these figurative. Um, dreamlike pieces that's cool. yeah that's good thank you yeah hey. I'm, i mean i sort of feel like i just like everything <laughs> you said is <laughs> also what i would say yeah um so yeah i think very similarly my favorite mm. part is see the seeing mm. um <laughs> and especially the 
the part of that where you're making connections for mm. me. I like the connection making. So mm -hmm. making sense out of, mm. you know, mm -hmm. everything, the world, big ideas, God, myself, mm. how it all fits together, what is true, you know, and when I'm, when I am working, I, <clears throat> I find that my brain is able to be in that place without a lot of distraction. And that is, that is a really valuable experience for me. Mm -hmm. Like I, the rest of my life, I feel very distracted and very pulled in a thousand directions. Mm -hmm. But when I'm making my work for the most part, unless I'm solving a problem that feels impossible mm -hmm. and then, you know, that's not very fun, but, um, but for the most part, like when I'm in the middle of a series or something where I'm like in, in the flow, people talk about being in a flow mm -hmm. state, you know, in that way, place of making mm -hmm. is my brain feels very calm and focused. And I love that mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it feels like when people describe deep prayer or meditation or, you know, those mm -hmm. kinds of activities. And I've read a little mm -hmm. bit about like brain science stuff that and it is actually in the same part as your of your brain um as those activities mm. is that like deep flow state of art making and interestingly enough and this is an aside that i'm not going to get lost in but that is also the same part of the brain that children engage when they're in deep imaginative play mm. which is super fascinating to me <laughs> yeah. so um <laughs> so i think i think that's my favorite part because i in in that moment i feel so connected to what is true and where I belong and to God um, and, and things feel balanced yeah. and they feel, I feel grounded. And, um, and it's because I'm, you know, I'm really able to focus on what feels important, what feels the most true. Um, so, I think that is my favorite part mm -hmm. that and then knowing that well, I'm making this so that I can also bring other people into that mm. place yeah. like it's not just about me having this experience but this is about me saying hey you too can yes. walk into this little moment um if you want to yeah. and here's a little aid like if you if you have a hard time doing that on your own here's a little invitation or a window or a moment mm. you know that yes. you can also come in to this place and like really sit with these things that are very mm. true and very good and um and yeah so that's my favorite and then and then my the hardest part is just also the time yeah time because it I feel like in this season of my life I'm always doing what I can in those in-between moments, mm -hmm. like really short mm -hmm. times of working or whatever I can snatch away. And so I know the work that I'm doing is, is the work that can be accomplished in that way, which is good. It, and it is better than nothing, <laughs> uh, which is like, this is the phrase we have in our house is like, something is better than nothing. Like, <laughs> defines my entire like, art <laughs> experience. Um, <laughs> But I know that there's work that I could be doing and that I hope to do one day that is bigger and deeper and more involved. And I, I think the hardest part is just in this season that always is being put to the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, you have this thing in you and you just can't quite ever do it. So yeah. I think that's, that feels discouraging sometimes. And, you know, there are, and, and confusing sometimes also because it's like oh that that is actually very painful um but also that there is so much pain that is far greater than that in the world you know that but it is very it is painful to feel like you have something inside of you that you just can't do um and and so i think you know vacillating between feeling maybe feelings of guilt or like, this is what I should just get over this. But then also wanting to recognize that this is the way that God has made me. Right. And, and he's given me these things mm -hmm. that are inside of me. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. there is a reason why it's painful. And um, so, I mean, one of the things I'm working on right now in, 
in my work is like longing, a feeling of longing mm. and, and trying to make a connection and make sense of and make truth mm. out of longing. Like, okay, mm. where where is the good in the longing? Because mm. that's a lot of what I experience. And mm. maybe there is something, not maybe, but there is something, right, that we can learn mm. in that, that actually brings us into something bigger of God. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. if we have great longing to do, you know, these things, that means that there is something in God that can meet that longing. And mm -hmm. so that means something really amazing about God. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I got a little off track. No, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, so um, I'm, I, I'm going to go off script. We're gonna do a little speed round. And so the rules are twofold. One, you got to go with the first thing that comes to mind and you get one sentence to explain mm -hmm. why. No, and, not, and not a sentence with lots of commas. Uh, <laughs> okay, so there's gonna be three questions and we'll do them each one at a time, right? All three, okay. okay. So first question is, if there is a work of art that you could go experience in person, what would it be and why? So what would it be and one sentence why? Can you give us like a moment? Yes, yeah, I'm gonna that? give you. I'm gonna give you a moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one work of art that you would say to yourself, oh, I'd love to be in the presence of it, physical presence, and then one sentence why. Okay. So. But this, the whole point of the speed round was to go with the first thing. That comes right. Out. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? They're like so, I know. That's why I said. Okay. Fine. Pedro, I'm okay. Going with I, you first. Okay. 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 <laughs> um. So. I'm just going to say like a say it yeah okay and then this sentence that's so Jean-Claude and Christo are these oh, right, yeah, right yeah, earth yeah. like space earthworks big mass they mm, make these right. big massive installations I would say any of their right. wrapping they do these wrapping mm. of like mm. mountains basically, yeah. right yeah. they wrap it in fabric and I would so if I were able to experience any yeah. of those I would love that okay yeah. good yeah. Stephen yeah so lots of things come to mind <laughs> But, uh, a Rembrandt. Uh, right now, I'd like to see uh, Rembrandt um, because I, I, I love, I love, uh, you know, I, I love studying lighting, natural, natural mm. light. And, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So what, one of his paintings. Yeah. I, okay. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mina. Okay. Rothko Chapel. Oh, good. Which is accessible. It's in yes. Houston. Yeah. <laughs> I still right haven't there. seen it though. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. We should, we should do that. I'm there. It is um, really yeah. So yeah. Rocco Chapel, because of the same same reasons, like it's just a surrounding, uh, meditative. You know, it's this huge, you know, sort of project that, you know, was made by him, and then people helped him build. I, I don't know. I just like everything about the collaborative pieces of making a giant piece of art like that, and then having someone physically enter it mm -hmm. like that seems very mm -hmm. church like to me. <laughs> yes, like i love right. that and so um and then the colors yeah. and the yeah just experiencing that okay okay good speed round number two if you could have coffee or tea with any artist living or dead who would you have you have one hour to have coffee or tea with them. Horrible. I, I know i know super horrible. cruel to oh, limit yeah. i know but i already know. okay i think too okay all right right um, you know. makoto fujimura oh, well he's living she, i know but you said living 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 Okay. <laughs> Which I, I mean, her life is amazing. Right, You've right, never right. read her her biography is incredible. Yeah. She she's far more complex and yes. interesting than giant flower paintings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Stephen. Oh man, uh, I'll Leonardo da Vinci. How about? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I mean, sure. how about? <laughs> Yeah, if he was able to pay attention. He probably <laughs> had ADHD. That guy. Right, right. He was multiple. Just mm. But yeah, that's good. Okay, last uh, speed round. Um, if you could do an artist residency anywhere on planet Earth, mm. where would you choose to do a residency? Mm. If money were not an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm ready. Maybe. Go for it. Um, <laughs> so I've been really digging deep into... Mm. 
uh, my own family history, uh-huh. and then uh, Christian Christianity in India. Mm. Um, and I would really love to go to India, not just because my family is there. I would love to go and just be with them. Um, but India, um, okay. yes. Somewhere. Uh, well, my family is like in Mumbai, Delhi. Okay. Okay. You know, so those. So, are, yeah. Yeah, central, mm. more central. There are some amazing artist communities in India, Christians. We need to so talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There's mm. such good people there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Stephen. Where do you want to go? Um, yeah. You can say Italy I, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. No, where do you want to go? Your, Europe. No, <laughs> Iceland. 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 Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. That would be amazing. That would be cool. Okay. Iceland. Okay. Um, I would go to Scotland. It's like an easy... <laughs> <laughs> and there's a place there, actually, that a professor of mine at school did some work at called the Scottish Sculpture Workshop. Huh. Um, mm. And I would love, they do residencies and they have, you know, space and tools and mentors mm. and um, it's in a neat location. I would love to go there mm. and, for like, That'd you know, awesome. six months. Okay, so last two questions, we'll keep them brief. If there's one thing you could go back in time and tell your younger self, what would you say? One thing. And then the second, our last question that we could just kind of hang out is is there a, a a a clear point of connection between the person character work of god and yourself as an artist like what obviously there are many aspects of the shrine god but if there's one that you feel like truly deeply resonates with who you are and your sense of calling as an artist what would that be so if you could go back in time to a critical point you know whether it's teenage or college years and tell your younger self one thing about the calling of an artist. What would you say? And then a point of connection with the, the character of God. So let's we'll start with uh, going back to, to time travel question. Anybody can go first. Um, mm-hmm. I guess I, I would uh, go back and tell that first grade, you know, awkward skinny kid that. Um, you're loved and accepted. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, mm. she just really didn't know that. Mm. Um, and so, like, even if she didn't decide to become an artist, like, you know, just to know that deeply mm. and, and to find who she is out of that. Um, yeah, That's and good. yeah. Good. And I mean, you know, the connection with God comes from that for me too. Like, I feel Mm -hmm. like, you know, being an artist is, it's so much more than making work, you know, like you're being in community, you are, you know, paying attention to community and, you know, everything around you. Um, Being an artist is generous, I think. Like you you have to think about it that way. Um, It's not just about, like Phaedra said earlier, it's not just about, You, yourself mm-hmm. and, and what you're making and and so just thinking yeah thinking about it as a gift mm. and um being honest mm. and uh you know connections you know giving that sort of moment what Phaedra was talking about when they are with your artwork that moment that they can experience the same mm. I mean I think and it just takes time to be in the pro- in that cocoon phase so that the art that you make is honest and real mm-hmm. and so yeah. the you know the viewers you know can experience mm-hmm. the same yeah that's um, good yeah that's good thank you mm-hmm. steve one thing you wanted to tell your younger self yeah this is so tough um Yeah, maybe just, um, yeah, just to keep, keep, keep going. Um, yeah, just to, you know, maybe somewhat similar um, that, yeah, it's, it's, um, well, yeah, maybe, maybe that it's, you know, that it's a, that's a, val- you know, this is a, a valid thing to do. Um, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's good. And then a point of connection between your work, sense of call, and the character of God. Um, work of God. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, what comes to mind maybe is, you know, just uh, revealing glory. I, um, it's, uh, it's hard to, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think I'm kind of similar, you know, to what Nina and Stephen have said. It's like, I think I would tell myself who you are and, mm -hmm. and what you love and the way you see the world is enough. Like you don't have to mm -hmm. become mm -hmm. someone more mm -hmm. intelligent or more sophisticated or more clever in, mm -hmm. to do your work. Mm -hmm. Like you, what you love and what mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. is enough mm -hmm. and yeah. just do, do work out of that place, knowing that, that you don't, you know, that it's good enough. Um, mm. Cause I feel like in my early years, I was just always feeling the, a lack of like, well, if I were just smart, like if I could just be a little bit smarter, my work would be better mm. rather than just be like, well, what do, what do I, how has mm. God made me? Right. And what do I particularly enjoy and see and love and like mm. make art about that. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> and yeah. that's, that's good enough. In fact, that's yeah. needed. It's, it you know, it's yeah. not just enough, but it's what you should be doing. Yeah. So I would say that. And then I think, what, um, I would say, uh, I feel like, I think this is a, a work that the Holy Spirit does. I mean, you're the theologians, you could correct me. <laughs> but making the unseen seen, I, I love to, to feel like that's part of my mm work is mm -hmm. taking I, things mm -hmm. that are unseen because mm -hmm. they're not noticed or mm -hmm. because they're literally invisible yes. concepts mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. exist in the kingdom of God that we don't see or mm -hmm. and bringing bringing that to be more seen mm -hmm. or more more accessible to people yeah. like that reminder mm -hmm. that this that we see is not the realest thing actually right. there is mm -hmm. something behind all of this that is more real yeah. and that's that's what I kind of want to mm. like remind people of. Yeah, mm. that's good. Yeah. Uh, Nick, how are we going time wise? Oh, wait. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm like 20 more minutes. Oh, oh great. Good. Okay, so how about this? I'm going to throw it up to our, our, our oh, small please. group here. Uh, um, yeah, our, our viewers. <laughs> uh, this is sponsored by Diet Coke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an influencer. Um, so uh, a question I'd love to throw out to, to anybody is a question that I include with my students. Um, and uh, I'm always so fascinated to hear the answers that they give, which may be similar to the things that you guys have said already. But one question is, what would you want to say to a room full of artists? Like if you're, which I think what we sort of are, but if you were with a room full of artists and they said, we'd love to hear like, what's the good news, word of wisdom, word of encouragement, <clears throat> what would you tell a room full of artists? And then sort of on the opposite side, what would you tell a room full of non-artists? Not, not like in a demeaning, like <laughs> you're all non-artists, you're dumb, but like, you're like, we're not artists. So mm. we don't know stuff. Um, and what would you want to tell, you know, that room? A variation on the question is, what would you want to tell a room full of church leaders, uh, which is, you know, a very particular kind of audience. Are we answering that one too? Because I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh sure. <laughs> yeah, why not? We, we have one church leader here. So fine, we'll have three, three questions. That. So uh, we'll just throw it up. Send that to me. Yes. So uh, what would you want to tell a room full of artists? Uh, a room full of people who are like, we're not artists, but you know, we'd love to hear what you have to say to us. And then a room full of church leaders. Anybody? Okay, I, I know okay, it's I, hard to get started. I, I you want to go? Okay. Yeah. And then we'll just go around the room. So instead oh, of like, everybody, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, everybody. Okay. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah, it was yeah, long No, 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 we're opening. It's too awkward. Like somebody's like, I don't know if, if I should say. So we're just going to, you go and then we'll go okay, around okay. just because it'll be Good. fun. 
Okay, I would say to artists, um, you you have to be patient. <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah. Like it might take a really, 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 really long time. Yeah. Mm. Like you might not feel like you have success with your art until you're 65. Mm. Right. So, you know, just keep, if you can just be patient and keep going, it something will happen. Yeah, I wish somebody had said that. To me. Yeah. That's encouraging to me. That is <laughs> <laughs> not that like things are, but oh. just like right, right. I, I I have to tell myself that because everything in the world tells us mm -hmm. that you like you're an artist or whatever. I mean, for anything, right? And then it's like, oh, well, I've been doing this for a year and I'm super successful. Like it just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, just to jump mm -hmm. in with what you're saying, like I saw something this week about. Uh, there's this artist, Austin Kleon, who's mm. kind of local here, but known everywhere. And he had this uh, really just wisdom that I needed to hear, like, just ignore those lists that that are like 30 under 30. Like, you, have to, <laughs> you know, oh, the, these yes, like 40 like under 40, you know, or whatever. Just ignore oh, those. 50 under 50. 50. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I, I'm getting there. 1,000 under 1,000. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But look at look at the artists, the writers, the creators who are seventy plus and still mm. going. You know, yeah. that's good. That's good. That's good. That's yeah. Good. That's good. All right, Shannon, we're gonna jump to you. Okay. Stephen, we'll come back to you. Okay. You can answer any one of those Three questions. Questions. Um, I think it's like in line with what you guys were just saying. Like, there, I don't even remember who has who said this, but comparison is the thief of joy. Oh, yeah. mm, that's who good. said that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, the libraries will say CS Lewis. Right? Like, I don't know if he really did. Well, yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, I just like. Thank you. <laughs> that was CS Lewis. That was definitely CS Lewis. Five staples. Um, I think that would be my own, like, <clears throat> encouragement mm. to myself right. and then to, like, for, I mean, it's in the context of what kind of what you were saying, like, the 30 under 30 is like, yeah. just don't, don't, don't go there. Don't yeah. go there. Don't think about it. And, um, and just, yeah, I think um, it's, it robs you of the, the joy of the, um, the pro there's like supposed to be joy in that or not supposed to be that's not the word i'm looking for there's joy in the process mm -hmm. and in the journey and it may be that yeah you're 65 and it may be that no one ever looks at what you made or yeah. reads what you wrote or um mm -hmm. but there's something beautiful that can be formed in you mm -hmm. through the process and mm -hmm. what you were doing so that's good that's but that's don't, good. That's don't look great. what other people are saying right. yeah <laughs> <laughs> And it's not just social media, it's the media, right? It's just like yeah. in general, don't like mm. compare what you're doing to, to someone else. Right? Yeah, that's right. good. That's good. That's good. good. Mm. Jeff. Mm. Yeah, kind of building off of that, uh, the, my work to non artists or people who don't consider themselves artists is um, this is not an original thought. Um, we are, um, we're made in the image of. Uh, of a creator, and uh, and so so creativity is uh, is part of us, like mm -hmm. a big a big part of us. And at some point, um, when we're young, we start uh, becoming self conscious, mm -hmm. and we start looking around at what other people are doing and comparing, mm -hmm. and uh, and and we stop. Um, like there's, mm. there's some, or people who mm -hmm. it's just not like art is not just like in you driving you, you have to do it, right. uh, for, for other people, uh, it, it just becomes this thing that just like, oh, well, art's just like this silly thing that you do in school and then, and then you're done, you don't mm -hmm. do it anymore. And so, um, so to recognize, no, like this is part of, of each of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and it doesn't matter what other people do or are doing or if they're, but like art is, um, like for some people, it's something that you spend hours and hours and you know years and whatever like developing, and for other people, um, it's just something that just needs to be practiced. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and whatever the outcome is, like, doesn't really matter. Um, but it but it is the process. And so, 
Yeah, it's just it's un it's unfortunate that uh, mm -hmm. as children, yeah. uh, it really happens at, at you know for children. I think it's yeah. just like this like oh put away the toys and right. uh, and get serious. <laughs> right. And, uh, <laughs> and and it's because of I think it's because of comparison and, and mm. uh, so um, mm. yeah. So we just need freedom. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's Can good. I add to that, Jeff? Yeah. Um, mm. There's this term that Makoto Fujimori uses called utilitarian pragmatism. And mm. I think in addition to the comparison, it's also, you know, as we grow up, even in those elementary years, you know, you, you know, you're starting to see like, oh, well, you know, there's no use for this, mm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and you're being mm -hmm. kind of told that in different ways, you know, it's kind of external and then becomes mm -hmm. internal, I think, and then you know, just really fighting that, you know, I don't know, like, it's just kind of sort of, you, you have to kind of go against the grain with that, with, you know, it's not just in Christian culture, it's, it's all over, you know, mm -hmm. and um, to fight that utilitarianness of things. Mm -hmm. That's good. Shirley, you want to say something? I mean, you're a theater artist. So. Yeah, I come at it through the lens of stage. And, um, but I think it would apply. Um, whenever I have been on stage and I look out at the people, you're giving mm. them an opportunity for usually a couple of hours just to escape, mm. just whatever is going on in life, mm. just for two hours, just to escape. Mm. And uh, I think the same would apply if someone's going through an, an art gallery and then mm. they stop and look at a piece. Mm. It, uh, this is giving a few minutes to put everything else aside mm -hmm. and just escape into whatever that means to you, wherever it takes you, you just escape for a while. So that's what I would tell an artist is, you know, that you're giving people an opportunity mm -hmm. um, to escape. And to the non-artist, and I have it tattooed in Hebrew, <laughs> to pause and think about this. Mm -hmm. Just, just mm -hmm. stop for a minute. Yeah. And, and, and y'all have already talked about it. Mm -hmm. Just stop for a minute and think about mm -hmm. this. Say that. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can pull C.S. Lewis in just for a, a moment, <laughs> not, in vain, not in vain. Um, <laughs> mm. He talks about good escapism. Because mm. usually people think we're only right. escaping from, but yes. he talks about escaping mm. into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that art at its best helps us to escape into a world mm -hmm. that makes sense and sort of returns mm -hmm. us to our own world with a sort of reoriented sense of how things can <clears throat> hold together rather than being, you know, fragments. It's hard to make sense of our lives. So, so he talks about good escapism. Mm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I like that. It's mm -hmm. just a nice little subversion of the mm -hmm. only one sense of a moment of respite, perhaps. At worst, maybe like I hate my life and I'm gonna live in this artificial world. <laughs> but Lewis is like, it's it's a movement that you know can sort of bring health and life, vitality, meaning, coherence. Mm -hmm. in the from and in, in to the to right. the movement of escapism. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing more enjoyable as, as a comedic artist is to be on stage and to, and to hear somebody laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. yay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're having fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. And true. take it out with you. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. Jim Gaffigan. Uh, Mary. Um, so I think um, Things that come to mind is so similar to things that other people have said already about um, really looking, seeing. Uh, so, a room full of artists, I, a couple of quotes come to mind. One from the theologian von Balthasar on um, to accept what is given just as it offers itself. Um, so, mm. as you are before reality, before mm. a great work of art that you're looking at. Um, like that, that um, you know, accepting what is being mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, along with that, um, to bring up Lewis again, mm -hmm. um, he has this beautiful passage in um, an experiment of criticism mm -hmm. to where he talks about when you're looking at a work of art and he says, The first, I can't remember the exact word, the first thing you do. Before mm. the art is surrender, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. listen, see, mm -hmm. get yourself out of the way. Mm -hmm. And before you, sur before you've surrendered, you can't know. 
Twitter. Like, mm -hmm. like you have to look first. Sure. Um, the mm -hmm. um, so I think too that we told artists I would um, mm -hmm. uh, say reality is rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those works of art are rich that you're looking at are full of mm. um, uh, wonder and mystery mm -hmm. and depth mm -hmm. um, that is inexhaustible. And um, so we need to approach that with courage um, because mm -hmm. um, that's really scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. and humility. Yeah. And, and, and wonder. Yeah, that's good. Mm. That's good, man. Rob, anything? Uh, I feel like there's been a, what, one thread among many threads of the tension for an artist between the practical and the, mm -hmm. the impractical. <laughs> and, and one thing that's come out, I think, is like the supreme practicality of the impractical. Mm -hmm. I think, like you said, not subordinating um, the true and the good and the beautiful to the useful. Yes. Yes. Uh, because what's the most Important for a human life is is not what's useful. That's like mm -hmm. um, And I was thinking a little bit of that line of liturgy or the feeling of liturgy is just. And I really remember the part I said, "Hey, you don't have to get in it." That um, like one reason, one reason discerning what you love, and and like. Continually carving out the hunger for what you love, the love that's been intended to you, is the most practical thing to do because what you receive is always going to be the most important what you can get to do. And so, like making yourself, uh, yeah, handing, handing yourself over to that love is wow. going to make you as fruitful as you can be. Push that love to the side. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. I just wanted to say that um, you remind me of a professor I had. Uh, me? Yeah. Okay. Who, uh, <laughs> who I think really helped me understand that point about the being practical of a certain sort. Oh. Um, we're putting first things first and see the practical is actually the thing. Yes. Interesting. Okay, it's 1230. Mm -hmm. um, so we could just pause our, our, our recording and then just hang out and we can keep talking. And that way we have a mailman coming in, <laughs> encouraging to come in. Um, but thank you, Mina and Stephen mm -hmm. and Pedro. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is our last Theology of Thank You, Nick, for hosting, yeah. making these